Mm -hmm. Yar, Wednesday, November 20th, 2013. Okay, we fixed everything. Third one of the day. <laughs> Drop the bomb. <laughs> That was, it's R&D, that's why they call it R&D, folks. The battery's telling you it's not happening. Look at that bird! What's that beep? that gust of wind. That was excellent. I mean, the props have been beat to shit, and and the motor mounts. And, and how, how quickly of... did you fix those little problems from the first two tests? Well, the prop, boom, two seconds. The motor mount, boom. Now we flush the toilet, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Drop the bomb, boom. That was cool, actually. I think you can use I, that. I got the Whoa. wow. No. <laughs> You'd be like. Ah! I don't want anything to it's fall out. It's a diversionary apple. tactics. Oh, <laughs> oh, that, that the song. <laughs> no, that's uh, pretty wild. <laughs> and the, the ultimate for live streaming, you know. I think it's gonna strap work on the like, HD yeah. broadcaster to Hero Three. Boom. This is definitely basement RC. Give it a Wi-Fi signal. It would be wild to remotely send up a Wi-Fi signal. It. Like, what's the range of, say, Bluetooth? No. No, I'm just thinking out loud. Well, Stupidity. I mean, you know, it's R and D. No, I know, and I'm saying you could. We and we do have 2.4 gig space here. Now, right now, this is a 2.4 gig transmitter, and it's just as you can see, strapped on here because I'm using it just for testing purposes. It's not the transmitter that, or rather, receiver that we're going to be using in the final device. Um, which is a, a, a UHF long range 433 megahertz open source transmitter receiver beacon find it device. You know, it's a very cool thing. So what I'm saying is that the broadcaster is using 2.4 gig bandwidth and with the right antennas, uh, I would suggest probably maybe a circularly polarized 2.4 gig uh, antenna set. One on the and this would be the and these are both two way. Well, All these antennas the are two way. You would have to have on board the broadcaster if the broadcaster does have, and you can maybe say to them, "Listen, what we need, or perhaps even the manufacturers, what we need is a, is a modem, 
or some lightweight uh, Wi-Fi uh, satellite connecting device that has a uh, SMA output for external antenna. Do you know what I mean? Like if you have your 4G LTE card or whatever remember, that plugs into that, this it, is the that's key. the antenna. This the little is... tiny thing is the 2.4 gig antenna. And, and what you're trying to do is connect between, okay. between that and the ground. So you need from the live stream broadcaster yeah. an SMA and te external antenna output that you can interface your Wi-Fi with. Now, I'm assuming it has a Wi-Fi interface. So if you can yes. have a, a circular yes, polarized does. antenna on your ground station that's connecting your laptop's output. Now, here's the other thing. On your laptop, do you have uh, an external SMA connector for the circular polarized antenna for the Wi-Fi? No. You have what built-in antenna they have in the thing. So with uh, a, a very... I, what is it? It's a smile... It's a PCI... M, I think, PCIM Micro is, I think, what it is. But on a lot of the micro ITX uh, boards, they have one of these slots, and you can slip in a diversity 2.4 gig module, which has a micro SMA output that you can then use to run two uh, antennas, which would say one directional, one and uh, omni. Yeah. And that would be what would be sending and receiving the Wi Fi. Mm -hmm. And you likewise on the other craft have to have, uh, you know, whether lin linear polarized or. Or, mm -hmm. or circularly polarized is showing us to have the best results. So that's what what we need is to have a link up that, that for long range. Now, well, on but here's the bonus. By line of sight, I don't know. Well, it here's depends the, on the two devices. Here's right? the additive thing mm -hmm. for live streaming only. Right. The, oh, I only give I don't give two flying fox about the download part. All I need to do is upload the app. The fact of live streaming, it's connecting to the server. So we're I'm uploading that signal. Straightly to the server, and that's all I give a fuck. Right. No, I know. It doesn't have. I don't need the download part if that helps, because the upload is easier to get than the download. You know, the most speeds. Right. Well, so saying, like, all we need is an uploading Wi-Fi signal. Right. That's all I need. Sure. And I don't think that's going to be a problem. It's just. It's just a matter of. If that help, and that should help. It should, and and like I said, if if the live stream broadcaster has an external uh, antenna option, if we have ability to use uh, tuned uh, antennas, that's going to give us the best operational range, um, you know. And there's there's really good quality off the shelf uh, circularly polarized antennas in that bandwidth uh, available in the market for ten or fifteen bucks. Mm -hmm. So you know, fixed mount antennas, or what we what we look at for Wi-Fi. In terms of amplification and just blasting things, it's not applicable for this because of sensitivities to to bombing other frequencies. Yes, we can mm -hmm. neatly fit a number of different uh, frequencies. We've got 915, we've got 433, we'll have 2.4, as it were, uh, with the live stream broadcaster. And uh, those those all have to talk in harmony with the 700 milliwatt mm -hmm. live video transmission in 1.2 gigahertz bandwidth. So... You know, if anybody gets too... Which we could live stream even that yes, signal. Yes, that would be a redundant signal. And, you know, not But the only quality the, would not... No, it would be a million times superior with HD broadcaster oh yeah, and a no, Hero no, 3. That's, that's, that's True, the but if difference. that goes down, at least we have a backup. Well, yeah, and the idea is that this flight cam does what, what it needs to do. That's the camera that's looking down the barrel of this recording lens. Now, for certain reasons, and we're not going to get into that, the GoPro or GoPro 3 isn't the best FPV cam or piloting cam, in my opinion. A lot of people would agree with me, and including some professionals. That's the piloting um, cam. That's the piloting at. cam. And these come in all flavors, so that this can be exchanged quickly. It's like, oh, low light conditions or la la la. There's also uh, an on-screen display that allows you to set up some of the parameters. They're very, they can be very complicated, all different types of flavors. Anything from $15 all the way up to $150 and, and beyond. Uh, there are analog zoom capable cameras of this type that we would have a mechanical servo. This is a cutting edge and kind of thing. What's the uh, resolution? The resolution's 40 times on uh, I think uh, nice. 20 millimeter lens. And then what's the resolution of the uh, image? The final image, if it's going to go through the wireless device, like this piloting oh, camera. Oh, this camera, this particular camera is a 700 TV line camera, TVL camera. I don't know how that translates. I think it's got. 720 by something. Pick, yeah, right? Mm. It's pretty good. Now, my, my display is only displaying 640 by 480. But at least the camera, and you saw the image, it's a pretty good image.
Mm -hmm. You know, this is the live streaming. That's camera. the live streaming camera. So that's what. Well, this isn't exactly it, but the GoPro three connected directly to the live stream broadcaster is going to give a crisp, you know, high frame rate image directly to the the mirror, directly to the upload, and and that's going to. I think that's the biggest difference now. What you're doing with this cam is making sure that this cam, and I would say these two cams are on the same device, which is a tilt. That uh, would be no, fucking well, a bicycle spoke. Well, what? No, 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 no. Between no, them. No, 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 no. It's a servo line. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's I controlled know. Controlled through here, and the only thing that's making no, this. No, and that when that moves, no, this moves. No, no, no. It's not that much no. mechanical. It's that there's a servo here. I'll show you again. This is a camera that's been fitted whoops, with, a, with an actuator or a servo. You're going to get really used to these because they're like the power arms, okay? So the little actuator in, and the arm connects to the, to the unit here. So as it moves, it just goes. Now what controls that motion is either you, by intention, mm -hmm. right, in camera mode. Well, you can you've, control you've that. Arm, or right? the APM 2.5, uh -huh. Right, actuates this and puts you on auto level. So you tell the EPM where level is, and as the craft moves, it will consistently find level. Mm -hmm. Right, it's not going to pan. Now you could put pan on it, but as we've talked about, nah. it's too the yacht. Goofy. The yacht takes care it's of it. Yacht. If that is exactly. stable, I just want to be able to see the horizon. You see, so that's pan and that's tilt about. in the end is all I need. So the same thing. I can do here. miracles with you that. You have the same thing. You'd I'm a filmmaker. Servo, you'd have a servo mount. And the GoPro would just be on a very simple swivel mount like this. Yeah. And and these two cameras would be tied into the same output from the autopilot, so they would work in tandem. They would automatically move up and down according to your settings in the mission planner. Okay. And the tilt is something that you know you use occasionally. It's more to yaw. Well, yeah. Well, in the yaws, and and, apply, and if I could be, piloting, if, that's see? you know, I like the helium balloon thing because so here's if the, I have a stable pla like okay, I think of this. Look, there's a little servo, you see. So the servo would be bolted onto an adapting system, and it would just move back and forth, and that would cause this to move back and forth yeah. on its swivel mount. Okay, and yeah. this this is the the ground receiving system. Like we were talking about Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is a two-way receiving sending units a mm -hmm. data modem okay it's a common device that there's the the rf circuit okay and it's this part of it is the arduino bootloader there's arduino i love arduino okay. i'm gonna give a little thing rc timer these people are awesome um maybe people don't like them maybe they do i don't know but if you go to rc timer you're gonna see all this equipment there and you can spend some time on their site but this data modem connects with the data modem that's in the sky by my computer you see so I need to have a line of sight between here and there mm -hmm. and so this would work like Bluetooth in a sense eh? that that I could just plug this in here I could connect to the device that's close to hand and that's great I can update all of my stuff I can tell it to go waypointing I can change flight modes I'm not controlling the flight characteristics I'm controlling the flight modes I'm controlling the the parameters of its fail safing mm -hmm. of its um, navigational modes or its flight modes selected by the radio anyways this connection could be used in my estimation now this would require some additional programming to control certain aspects of the live stream broadcaster mm -hmm. okay so so if there is a way that the the, the txrx information the send receive information mm -hmm. could be received by the the live stream uh broadcaster and built into mm -hmm. as a specific upgrade so all you programmers out there i'm not the programmer i'm just the system guy i'm saying look at the mission planner uh find a way to build into it a module that allows you to control whatever aspects of the live stream broadcaster you want from your ground station via i can this there's two okay. ways i could remotely control the uh hd broadcaster right. One, it it beams from up here, right, directly to the new .livestream.com account because it's a livestream.com product. I could control it from there. When you say it beams, what are you talking? About? It uploads. Uploads what? So no, 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 slow down. Which, so what, what are we okay, about? so it, the Hero Three. It's uploading oh, to wait, a satellite. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so okay, the Hero Three is connected HDMI to the broadcaster. Uh huh. We we've powered the broadcaster. And then there's three ways I can get 
signal to it and all I'm doing is uploading is one Ethernet a home Ethernet line right. to USB rocket stick right or Wi-Fi right so whatever way we're hooked up uh, goes here to the broadcaster imagine it was there right. and it's uploading to the server now it uploads to the server so right. f f and then wait a minute wait, and wait wait you, wait, 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 wait 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 so the thing is here hold this camera it's, it's easier for me to okay so here's the broadcaster yeah right this is what I'm live streaming in the field it's purely upload it decodes the information comes to the server upload it to the server it decodes it it's flawless because it's its own product mm -hmm. and then you mm -hmm. at home that's ideal conditions from now the what server, i'm saying is i'm saying right? what happens if you lose the internet feed because this is the most common thing is that i know from the air or from even the on the ground that's the most both, common problem we lose the internet feed so that's what i'm saying the redundancy to control the live stream broadcaster and or resetting its commands and or making connection changes and or like we've been talking about uh, establishing a link between this and the Alex board that's on board. So in addition Alex to the Moss. APM, the APM, no, not Shall the Alex it. Moss board. No, 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 no. The APM that's... flight controller. Fine. The Alex, I think it's called. It's an AMD uh, Mini ITX micro, micro, self-powered uh, Linux-based uh, operating system on this board. And what it does is mm -hmm. it allows us to control. Um, the APM 2.5 as not not from from the ground station from ground station. It, okay, look, I have Windows open here on my computer. Yeah, I'm running uh, the ground station. Uh, okay, and then I send a command. It has to go through my computer through the USB, make a connection to the data modem. Okay, and then make a change on the APM board. Now, what I'm suggesting is that a motherboard, which would then be replicated on my computer, okay? So I've got an ad hoc connection, I've got a mirrored connection using this data modem, and it's controlling a Linux-based computer that's running ground station a on it. A flying CPU. Yeah, it's a flying CPU. With no display. We could have a little LCD And then display. you're remotely slave to that from the ground. Right. On a laptop. Yeah, you could have a little LCD on it that you can well, you, no, you, you, no, well, you, you just know, come up to the board, you go click, and then you can program. It's it's basically an ATM computer. Or, or you can mirror this, that on the screen part uh, down, uh, yeah. uh, well, downstairs. Do yeah. On Windows down here, I, I would have a I would have a, a virtual machine open running a very basic Linux operating system, mm -hmm. and I'd be able to control Mission Planner, Arduino, Fred. Who is Arduino? I love Arduino. Arduino. Bootloader. Bootloader. So, so that's basically going to allow me to, to use the computer to establish USB connection to, to perhaps the GoPro 3, to other uh, units on the thing, and allow for multiplicity of Wi-Fi connection. It's going to allow for me to switch between Wi-Fi feeds, see, because the, the Elex board can have its own Wi-Fi transmitting receiving device, and it just allows us to, to have more functionality. You know, theoretically, you could use the Internet to program the mission planner on board this device. You see kind of possibilities that open mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. So the name of the game in this case is flight duration. And what we want to accomplish here is the lightest weight, most powerful, uh, well-tuned device that's got the greatest resolution from the flight control system. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about vibration dampening here. It's about strength and rigidity here, mm -hmm. lightweight and, uh, a modularity, be able to, hmm? and oh, and then quickly. So there's two ways I can remote con control the broadcaster itself. Is one through the website, through the servers at uh, available right, right, right. at the live stream channel, uh, or so that's through a laptop or a desktop. Right. And and two, only iPhone. They have an iPhone remote control app right. for the HD broadcaster. Uh, but no Android app as of today. Right. So this is this is the little FPV switch. Yeah, it's a it's just a switch. It's got three camera inputs and a receiver. Let me zoom in. Hold on. Yeah, a receiver switch. So so my radio receiver connects to it. First person and, view. And three cameras connect to it, and then 
and output goes out to my video transmitter. So my radio receiver is this can, on board? Yeah, this is flying up in the air. See, because it's very small. So it's flying up in the air in all three cameras. So there's another camera that you don't on see. On the side. On the side, or yeah. pointing down. Or we could have it on a way to look sideways or down, which would be effective, because sometimes you do want to look down. Yeah. Okay. And so we've got... Um, our 90, main, 90 degree down. Yeah. Right, 90 degree down. So we've got our main pilot cam. We've got a recording camera. Uh, we've got a third camera, an auxiliary camera. They're all connected to the switch. And it's switched from the ground to look through whichever camera you select. And how do you control that on the ground? By a uh, three-way switch. Cram camera one, camera two, camera three. All right? And that would switch from this camera to this camera to that camera. Right? Click, click. Right. Easy. Mm hmm No problem. Very cool little thing. Yeah. Right. And that works in combination with the OSD. So again, look And up. that if, if this connection goes down, because all I do, I can get that onto the desktop as well, right? Right. That I can get all three signals. If I can get it on my desktop, I could live stream it as a yeah. backup. HD broadcaster is right. way better, that's of right. course. And the thing is, but if that signal's down and you need to record, you right. if I can switch between the two inferior ones right. compared to the Hero 3, right. then... That helps me. Well, what's going to go on? Because you, you I'm assuming I'd have a better, stronger, more connected Wi-Fi signal on the ground, which is what I'm live streaming with. Maybe. It's hard to say. I think. Well, no. Uh, let's assume that because right. it's me. Well, the live, <laughs> the live stream broadcaster is likely going to have a better chance of connecting in the air than you will on the ground because of, uh, because of interference That's right. and so on and so forth. That is so and it's a satellite connection, so it's going to have a 360-degree uninterrupted. Why don't we use. fly a modem and it provides well, the signal definitely. for me? The modem, like we were looking at the DDR, this, right Or the here, helium balloons. Right, is, DDR3. Is, a, is a flashed Motorola modem. It's nothing special. That's DDWRT? WD, yeah, DDWRT. So as long as That's this right. can reach, and here, look, it's got an external SMA connector. So I, on this can put my SMA uh, external um, Antennas. antenna. That, Which one would well you use? Tuned. Well, it depends on what I'm going to do with it, right? And if I'm going to be flying it and it's going to be moving around in the air, it should have a circularly polarized antenna. Or you can use linearly polarized and, and do something like this, which is a bi-quad antenna. And these have been proven effective in a linearly... Those are light. No, yeah. sorry, no. So here's your circularly polarized... You know what the trouble with that is? Delicate. Right? It doesn't put up a lot of abuse. Yeah. And you have to constantly check it. This, because we're talking tank, right? Yeah. This is tank. And but of it's course, heavy. <laughs> well, it's a ground station thing. You're not flying that. No. No, this is, this is your receiving antenna. And in 2.4, it would be half as big. Because the bandwidth of 2.4 is a little bit smaller. So and what's that saying, one called? That's a bi-quad. And as an example here is a 2.4 gig patch antenna. So this is a directional antenna. And if you had a whip antenna, you know, like your standard rubber duck, they call them. Just like what we see on the, you know, your standard on, the, on board, you'd have a whip antenna like this. You'd have this pointed to it, and that would give you a very high gain. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have to make sure that you have the right... You know, you can't point it backwards. It's not going to pick it signal up. And that's where the circular polarized comes in, that they're omnidirectional. And if I was to invert phase, like if I pointed that at this this way, you see, because it has a very direct signal right there. Everybody, it's this Chinese something, oh, up. Okay, so that's <laughs> the way that it's in phase. So I could technically take one this way and one that way on a diversity system, but that adds complexity. And this is what the Baikwad has done, is integrated that polarity so that when a linearly mm -hmm. polarized antenna like this is an inverted V antenna and these make an excellent match if the two members if, if this little one was size, on see, board right you see how that is exactly the same length that's what establishes the tuning so these are tuned to work together and I can get up to eight kilometers away with a crystal clear image. Mm -hmm. okay. And that's on board. And it doesn't matter if I'm if That's I'm on board and that's on the ground, right? Down, because as you're flying around, this is this is constantly changing its attitude. Now again, this has to be, you can't, if I'm flying like this, I'm going to get a poor signal. But as soon as I snap that into focus, as soon as this is pointing 
to the thing. So this is what would happen is that you would have a ground-based tripod. Yeah. Okay, you'd have a tripod that would have, or maybe you'd have a couple of tripods depending on what you're doing. Okay, maybe you'd have one 2.4 gig tripod mm -hmm. that's got and a tracker. a mount for it at the back? Hmm? A mount? No, it's, this is just the panel. So what you'd oh, have okay. to do is mount this on a black plate. Yeah. Okay, you'd have to attach it to a, a pan and tilt servo-actuated uh, tracking system. Mm -hmm. Kind of like the tracking system for a, uh, for a telescope. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or, right? So mm -hmm. basically all that's going on is that on board here is a signal that it's using to constantly change the internet. Now, that's a lot of complexity too, you see. So, so what you can do is just put this on a basic pan tilt mount that can be manually controlled, or you can have it on servos that you can control from your radio so that you can just turn this Certainly, we need or, to train Occupopter teams. Well, you know, the, one of the ways that people have done it is they've just attached it to a post. <laughs> no, seriously, they have a backpack. They have these yeah, things. Yeah. They, they st set up a post. I've done it myself. It's a little cumbersome. But then, you know, you know where you are, hopefully. <laughs> and you just turn your body towards, so you're the tracker. So, you know what? However you want to do it, but this is, this is definitely... Why? Tank. And you can even spray paint media. On it. You totally could. Yeah, you totally <laughs> could. Live stream. This is tank and it's proven and it doesn't break and it doesn't get messed and up. And how much is that system there? Uh, this was like 30 bucks. <laughs> I know. In this day, two years ago, how much well, was it? And the thing is, you can get a kit. Like, I can send you all of these components and then you can spend your time cutting them out and bending them and doing all of the arts and crafts stuff because it's fun. Mm -hmm. Or, right, you can just have somebody in Poland do that, which is what I did. And they come as a ready-made, all-tuned, you know, specialist mm -hmm. kind of thing. So, however you like. Right? Yeah, I saw the Polish flyers when that came yeah, in came the mail. Polish, yeah, it's awesome. And, and Polish it's a way flyers. Of supporting like the underground economy because this gentleman, he took his time to to make a precision-based uh, thing for me, and I appreciate that. And so, uh, you know, again, you get the inverted V. This this inverted V is on a different frequency you see because these How members you know? are sl because they're different size right this is 1160 this one I know for is 1160 and that one I don't know right <laughs> it's a little bit bigger so it's like 1200 or mm -hmm. 1280 I don't know Professor X likes to simply fly truly things. and so whoa what you can use is your your remember that RC Explorer device that we looked at uh, the RC Explorer uh, multi range uh, scanner handheld scanner it's an RF scanner oh yes 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 yeah. yes so I'm only saying that you know you can use some basic tools it's a hundred twenty nine dollar device if somebody's going to be working with multiple bandwidths mm -hmm. it's probably not a bad idea to have something that can scan them and when you say oh I'm using uh, 2.4 gigahertz. Well, what exactly, what else is going on there? Because some radio transmitters, they might use uh, that frequency, but they might also send out uh, stray information on different bandwidths. Mm -hmm. So a spectrum analyzer, a way of looking into the airwaves, especially when you show up on site and you say, oh, I'm going to operate my 2.4 gig system, mm -hmm. and you want to find what direction the best signal comes from. You need the RC Explorer... Yeah. handheld frequency scanner for $129 yeah. so you can just get on site and basically take a take a reading because see really in the end in terms of live stream production as, as a filmmaker in terms of as a live stream director what I need it for I, I need it to be like a tripod pan and tilt I could work miracles with pan and tilt yeah, once right. I I already know the technique. It's just I gotta adapt it to that. this. I'll well, learn it quick. How precise you can control that. Look at already when the first flight, I, I found out how to zoom, thrust right. up and thrust <laughs> down. Yeah. So. Yeah.